this whole power crunch that's going on, I'm going to start with that first. What does that really mean when it comes to what you're looking at and, and overall just the, the macro weakness that we're seeing in China? It's just another drag on growth, isn't yeah. it? You know, the COVID's been difficult. That's been another drag. And this is within the kind of tactical changes. So this is the normalization that's trying to be implemented. And then also these big structural changes, this, you know, this regulation of the new digital economy um, and the new five-year plan. So this convergence of kind of tactical, cyclical adjustment and structural plan plus these external influences has just meant, you know, all year the data's underwhelmed and this is just another negative. Does it change how you, your strategy when it comes to China right now? What is the outlook when it comes to Chinese not, equities? Not specifically. I think there was exuberance early in the year. You know, you had forecasts up to 9%, you know, early in the year, and for next year, you know, over 6%. Whereas it was very clear, there was a very clear statement at the end of last year, they needed tapering. The debt bubble was getting out of control. So we always had quite modest expectations for this year. Difficult first half, we saw normalization, recovery second half. Um, I think we've all been a bit surprised at the scope and the range of the industry reform, these macro potential regulations, so the regulation of the tech sector, and then you've had the COVID and now power um, causing a more negative influence. I think net-net valuations have adjusted to levels where, considering we're at the tail end of tapering, we're at the tail end of normalization, actually is quite an interesting investment opportunity. Yeah, let's talk a little more about those opportunities, because you, you do have the likes of, of BlackRock and, and some of these asset managers that are actually looking very closely into buying and are buyers of Evergrande bonds right now. And, and Morningstar came out with a quite interesting report saying the reason is because if you, if you can assume that there's going to be an orderly debt restructuring, and, and at the end of the day, we could see some kind of state support, be it it's not direct, the recovery rate could actually be higher than what the market's pricing in right now. Yeah. Do you agree with that kind of view? Yeah, no, that's absolutely the key word, orderly restructuring. So, you know, the equity is still trading you know, in positive levels. In theory, this is, is a liquidity, not a solvency problem. Um, and outside of, of the lower grade, the B, the double B type names, the higher grade property companies, this actually could be a good time for them. Um, you know, land price started to fall. There's less competition from SOE. There's less competition for the marginal players. So the sector as a whole can remain stable and healthy. Meanwhile, again, valuations, you know, for the quality names are at distress level. Where there are a number of quality players not uh, in distress. So that's, that, again, clearly is an investment opportunity. Whether it is regulation on property, tech, and, and the like, is there a place that you think is, is the safest in China right now? The, the safest places have been policy alignment. Mm. Right. So clearly on the renewable theme, whether you be operators, whether you be materials, that's it's getting been, expensive though. They? Well, that's that's the problem. And same with technology. Yeah. Technology is same, right? So so that's key part of the five-year plan. So that that's the trade-off. You know, do, do you align with policy and stay in expensive, safe places, or do you look for the opportunities? I think the answer to that is barbell. I, th I think what you can find in distressed areas like property insurance, quality names trading at incredible valuations, good yields. Mm -hmm. You want to be a bit there, but you also want to be in the kind of interesting. Uh, policy aligned areas, you know, innov innovation, growth, um, you know, the, the new, uh, you know, conference prosperity type themes. You know, can you align yourselves with areas that benefit from broader wealth? Yes, is the answer. We're, we're talking about this global bond sell off here just because we have seen this hawkish tilt from developed central banks, whether it's the Fed, the BOE. I'm just wondering how that plays into your EM outlook here because some are saying, you know, the, 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 the macro weakness or the China slowdown could actually be a bigger risk than what we're seeing here when it comes to, to the Fed tapering, for example. What's yeah, your take you know, on that? I think, you know, the, there's two things I think that have kept, in general, kind of global rates lower than expected. One is obviously the COVID again this year, and B, the rate of the, the slowdown in China, second biggest economy. Um, so what China growth, slow China growth has done is actually kind of kept, kept expectation for rate hikes lower than they might have been. But clearly the signal is being given that we're going to start tapering and at some point rate hikes. What EM in general has been doing is preempting that. So you've actually seen quite aggressive rate hikes across a number of different countries, mm -hmm. um, you know, Brazil, Russia, et cetera. And I think what the, the basic, you know, the key question we get is why is China doing this so fast? I think the answer is preemption. Mm. I think what they want to be doing is potentially loosening into a US cycle that's actually tightening. It's not really talked too much, I think, enough about that. They're completely different stages of the cycle. China is at the end of tapering. We're definitely past the apex. I, we, we think we're at the tail end of normalization. Uh, you know, there's a scenario you could see where a year from now, U.S. rates could be 1% higher, China mm. rates could be 1% lower. Mm. Where do you want to be?